on and off the water, when it comes to safety, there is no compromise. So always read and follow all manufacturers' guidelines. Welcome to DIY Project Trophy. Today we're working on the fuel tank area in my 21-foot trophy. In order to set the new floor in the tank area, I need to determine exactly where the base of the tank sits. So I template cross sections of the tank, including quarter inch spacers for air circulation, making the tank wider, longer, and taller. I use this template to determine the placement and width for the upper edge of the subfloor. Bayliner used two layers of half inch plywood, but the only available material is three quarter inch, so the core will be an inch and a half thick. I use the hull angle to template the sides and create a drainage channel on the top. Therefore, the floor consists of three pieces laminated together and bonded directly to the hull. Under the floor is the wet zone, linking the cabin step to the bilge. I template the length, width, and height of the tank and test fit to make sure I have the required airspace around the tank. I will have to reduce the height of the tank to allow room for the filler hose. I'm ripping Arex board into three strips using my table saw with dust collection and full PPE. I work carefully and slowly, especially with the safety guard removed. The Arex board cuts easily and the shop vac seems to control the dust. Having a helper when cutting 4x8 sheets is preferable, but I'm working alone so I have extended the deck of the table saw to support the 4x8 sheet throughout the entire cut. I do not want the sheet kicking up or jamming. At the end, I use the emergency brake to avoid binding. Once I have the three strips, I rip a 45 degree bevel on one edge of each upper piece for the drainage channel. Those little strips turned out to be very useful later on. So make sure you save every scrap of leftover material. Once sanded, this edge will allow the fabric to lay down without any bubbles or voids. And on the bottom section, both edges are beveled to reduce the amount of sanding required. Notice how I use the stick to keep my glove and Tyvek suit away from the blade. Gloves and loose clothing are definitely a hazard when using a table saw. I mark the pieces in place and transfer the hull angle to the bottom edge of the core. I cut the sections to length, allowing four inches of air space at the bilge and two inches at the forward bulkhead. It's a simple concept. Make a paste, glue the pieces together, let it set, then sand it to form. I add cabasil to unwaxed polyester resin 
to form a paste. I'm treating it like construction adhesive. But here's where I make some rookie mistakes. I should have wet each surface with laminating resin to allow the Aerex to absorb all the resin it needs. And if this was a transom, that would be a different story. But I'm not worried about the pieces coming apart during the sanding process. And I would have been better served to use wax resin with the cabasil. Now I have to use wax gel coat in order for it to cure. In the future, I will have to think more carefully about the curing process. And in cases like this, I would use wax resin from now on. As it was, I wasted some gel coat and a mixing cup and a chip brush, and each little mistake costs me time and money. Luckily, it's a subfloor, not a transom, and I know it's a lot better than two layers of unprotected half-inch plywood. I glue them in place and weigh them down to set for several hours before sanding. It's time for sanding, so again, it's full PPE with dust collection in my backyard. I mark the angle of the hull and transfer it the length of the floor as a guide for sanding. With 40 grit, the belt sander really tears through the material as I try to match the profile all the way down the board. You can see where I had to apply waxed gel coat over all of the exposed unwaxed resin. Using waxed resin would have avoided this. I use the floor template as a guide for the hull profile. And I continue to the other edge. This old belt sander doesn't have a very good hose attachment, so the shop vac is less effective. Shortly after filming this sequence, I would invest in a new belt sander of my own as the tool investment costs increase. And I would continue to struggle with dust collection throughout the project. The data sheet for Airx PXC lists the hazards as one out of four for lung and skin irritation, but warns of extreme damage to the eyes. So having these particles all over the backyard and our living space is not ideal. I now have the shape of the subfloor using very basic carpentry skills. By sanding these hard edges, the fabric will lay down smooth and prevent voids and air bubbles. This was my first encounter laminating Airex or Kusa-like products, and I have to say, it was extremely easy to work with. It's light, easy to cut and sand, even by hand, but it is a hazardous material, especially with airborne particles. When I was finished, I washed everything down with the garden hose, including the Tyvek suit, boot, and gloves and every speck of dust that didn't make it into the shop vac is washed into the soil in my lawn, where it will remain forever. Having a pop-up tent with air filtration and better dust collection would be mandatory if I were to continue this hobby. Something low cost, but effective. Thank you for joining me today on Project Trophy. Hit subscribe and you'll be notified of the next episode. Please like and leave your comments or questions below.